Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is a tour of our elevator. Now I got a few requests for the elevator update. The elevator is done. Maybe I need to do like a couple little things, but it's pretty much done. So let's go take a tour. We are on the main floor, which is where we mainly live. Everyone is always on the main floor and the space from this wall to this door is like four feet, eight and a half inches. So it's almost five feet. Usually they recommend it to be five feet, but four feet, eight inches is, you know, like it's okay. I feel like it works. Uh, I've tried to pretend wheelchair and all of that. You know, it's, it, it works. The reason we did an elevator is to age in place. Building this house has been so expensive and so painful. I hope to never leave, like I don't want to leave my house. And I designed it to, for us to age in place where, you know, if you can't move or whatever and accidents happen, for whatever reason, we had an elevator so that we can be able to use all of our floors or have a basement, this main floor and upstairs. A regret that I did on the elevator is this. I had an option to put this door over here uh, on this hallway, but would have cost a little more for the elevator to have two doors. Now the top floor and the basement, they're okay. There's like, you know, a lot of space opening here. It's, it's, it's like perfect, but here it wasn't ideal because we have this door coming from the garage. I knew like it wasn't ideal, mainly because these two doors open into each other. I have to press this. You see how when you open this door, it blocks the door from the garage. Like if someone is trying to open this door from the garage and this is open, they're going to hit. Now, rarely is this ever going to happen because this door is closed pretty much like 99.9% .9 of the time. But there was one incident when we were moving into the house we had so many people here. Someone was moving stuff into the elevator and someone opened the door and they banged. There's like a little nick here that we'll have to repair. When I was designing my house, I thought so much about not doing doors that opened into each other. However, I feel like we didn't have any option and I didn't want to pay like more money to have a door that opens on this side. Plus, I planned for this wall to have our control center, like our weekly schedules and stuff. But it, also I'm like, what could I have done, you know, differently? Maybe, I don't know, maybe had would have had the door open this way. I don't know, it's just, it's just like a little thing. When you're designing a house, some mistakes are going to be there where you're like, you know what, let me just deal with this faux pas. So now let's get into the elevator. You see it's on the main floor and the door is closed. Now it has a lock on it, I believe this is the lock. It has a lock on it that even though it's on the main floor, you can't just open the door. You have to press so that this gate on the inside opens and then it will release this door to open. We planned that this elevator can take at least three people. So if you weld a wheelchair in, it will probably stay like right here and then you can have two, Archer, come here, honey. You can have like two people standing in here. So. Basically, you can have three or four people. I've been in here with five people before and it's perfectly fine. Now, when I was researching elevators, we got, they told me for, this is like the biggest residential elevator that you can get. I think there are elevators that are in between sort of residential and commercial, like a hybrid between residential and commercial, which would be kind of bigger than this, but I don't think we needed much bigger. This elevator is 18 square feet. I think this is a like five feet from the door to over here. And I think the width is about four feet. I feel like it's big enough. If I'm standing here and someone is standing here, there can be two more people in front of me and maybe two more or one more person. It can comfortably fit uh, four, four people and you can get away with five. And if you have little kids, like, even eight of them can fit in here. One of the things I did in the elevator, I wanted it to make it a little bit fancy. I put in these, are they called the orb de crystal chandeliers? They had to get cut up. We had to send like the measurements and stuff. 
and I love how they look. The only thing that I do not like, I went with stainless steel on top, like the light reflects on the stainless steel and I don't like it. So I think I may end up putting in wallpaper. I don't know if wallpaper actually could work on stainless steel. The reason I went with stainless steel is I wanted this to feel commercial. I wanted it to look like a commercial elevator. I don't know. Plus, I like stainless steel. I like that industrial look. One of my friends told me that I'm very, I'm kind of like a man. I don't really have a lady touch. I may later on change it. I don't even know if I can change it and do like wood panels. But for now, uh, I am liking the stainless steel. And then of course we did the same hardwood floors that we have in the rest of the house. Now we are gonna go onto the top floor. I think these lights are fine. We are on the top floor. And this is where you come out. There's so much space on the top floor. I think there's like seven feet, maybe. Actually, it may even be eight feet over here when you land on the uh, top floor and the basement. And usually I only use it when I'm going from like top to the basement. We watch a lot of movies. Once we're done watching movies and it's like two, you know, 1 a.m. or 12 a.m., like I'll just come up and uh, just take this uh, elevator from the basement straight up and, and go to bed. So most of the times I only use the elevator when I'm doing like either going from the top floor, going to the basement or basement to up. Then I'm not running down two flights of stairs. Now we are going to go from the top floor to the basement. We are in the basement. And you see how much more space we have in the basement. I think this is like at least 10 feet. I think that's whole hallway to get like over there is another maybe 20 feet. I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One is that even though this is the biggest residential elevator we can get, we're in Pittsburgh and it's not as big as New York or LA. The options for elevator uh, companies are kind of limited. The company that we worked with only had this as the biggest residential elevator. The reason I'm talking about this is even though it's the biggest residential elevator at 18 square feet, it's also smaller than I expected. I remember the first time I went into it, I was, I was like surprised at how smaller it looked. The framing looked really large, so I was expecting it to be bigger than it actually is. And another funny thing is I had a couple of my friends who are visiting me from Uganda and the first time I rode the elevator, there was three of us, we got stuck. We were in the elevator for like an hour. They installed in like, oh, it's done, it's perfect. We went in and yeah, we got stuck for like an hour. So then I had to call my project manager and a bunch of people to come and rescue us. That was kind of funny. I'll always remember that. We went with this elevator because it was supposed to be quiet and even though it's you know kind of quiet i was expecting like dubai level quiet you know elevator <laughs> level quiet it is louder than i thought it was gonna be we were doing the research this was supposed to be one of the quieter ones which is part of why we went with it but it's not as quiet as i expected it to be so we ended up paying like forty-three thousand. For it. Not sure how much of that was the builder's markup, um, and I don't. I'm not sure how much the actual, you know, cost of it was, but we paid forty-three thousand for it. The height is also taller than most. I think the standard is maybe seven feet tall. I think was the standard, and then we added like an extra foot. We had the space, so we made it taller. And I think it's either eight. I think it's eight feet or maybe nine feet. I don't know, like, but the standard, we added like an extra foot and I think it's worth it. And I'll, I feel like I'll extra uh, appreciate it when I'm a lot older in like 30, 30 years. If you're building a house and you don't, like you don't want to spend 43 grand right away, 
is you can stack this as closets. So on each floor, they can frame it for an elevator and then on each floor you just have a door and you can just walk like a small like walk-in closet. And then whenever you're ready, because the shaft is already there, you'll just knock out like the subfloor on each floor and then you can install it whenever. When they were pouring the slab for the basement, they did like an extra foot, like there was an extra foot that went deeper where the elevator was gonna be. So if you plan it out, they'll make sure they do that. I guess they put stuff under it or the elevator equipment to help it go up and down. So that, you know, like when you walk in, it's all, actually, this is what I'm saying. Like when you walk in this, this is the main floor, this is the elevator, it's all level. I'm sure under it, there's like equipment under that helps the elevator go up and down or even measures. I'm sure there's sensors there to know, okay, now this is, you know, stop here instead of like hitting the ground. This elevator is slower than I expected to be. To go from the basement to the top floor, I counted, I think it takes like 50 seconds. I feel like it should be faster. Like you're just going up like two flights. But because it's not commercial or whatever, it can't go like, you know, those fast elevators. Because I know I've been in Dubai and you can go from like, you know, the main floor to like floor number 30 in like a minute. But it does the job. I think that's all. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week.